Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we're going to be working with the Grandma's Garden set, the Stamps and Dies, as well as the Layering Wisteria. So the point of today's video is talking about these specific seven Copic markers. And it is going to be a RV04, a YRO4, a Y08, a YG03, a B45, a B04 and a V04. Now, when you're using Copic markers, I think oftentimes people feel like um, they don't know what colors will go together or what colors will go, you know, blend well. When you're looking at your Copic markers, and this only applies to Copics, not other alcohol markers, but if you look at the last number, that is going to tell you the intensity of the color. And so if the number is similar, in the bottom, like the YG03 is close to a uh, YR04, AV04, all of those things, like it's the 345. The only difference here is a Y08. And you saw me show you a Y15, a 15. So we're looking at the five. They're basically the same color, but my Y15 is pretty dry and I don't have a refill. So I just swapped it out with a Y08. If you're not sure, um, if you have a similar color, and you may, uh, I would highly recommend checking out Sandy Alnock's uh, hex chart. It will show you all the colors together um, that are next to each other. So that way you can see maybe where your um, collection is lacking and where maybe you need to fill in. But it will also show you colors that are similar. So here what I'm doing is I'm showing you all of the colors that will the way they blend together. So, so far we've blended a Y08 and a YR04. We've blended the Y08 and the YG03. Now we're moving on to the RV04. You can use this and add shadows with, if your RV04 is your base color, you can add shadows with a V04 or you can add shadows with a YR04. So one's gonna look more on the red, one's gonna look more on the purple, for the purples, you can shade it with the B04, or you can shade it with the B45. You can also lighten it up with the RV04. So that's what I'm talking about. You can see how well they work together. And I'm just trying to show you all of the examples. Now we are going to make two cards in today's video, and all both cards will be in colored entirely with these three markers. So you'll be able to see them more in action, but I really just wanted you to be able to see the blends you can get. The B45 works with the B04 and the um, YG03. You can also shade the V04 with the B45. I feel like I'm using so many numbers and it probably sounds really confusing, um, but I don't want to just be like blue, green, pink, purple, um, because I feel like that, if you're specifically looking for the numbers, that that might be a little bit confusing. So now that that part is complete, we are going to get into the actual card making. And like I said, every color that I just showed you is all of the, that's all I'm using to create both of these cards, to add the shading, to get the depth that we're going to create is just those markers and how well they work with each other. Um, so if they're not markers that you have, they may be ones that you want to consider picking up because they do work so well to shade each other and tone each other um, that you can get a lot of different uh, colors and ways to use your markers on a very minimal budget. Speaking of a minimal budget, if you're shopping for Copic markers, um, of course, you know, you have your sales, your coupons, your things like that. But if you're going to be shopping for Copic markers in a larger capacity, now I buy all of mine. I, I buy all of mine at Blick Arts. But if you're going to be shopping at a larger capacity, I would encourage you to use them because their Copic markers are cheaper than anywhere else um, that I have seen. So if you have a good resource also for Copic markers, please leave that in the YouTube comments for the other followers so that they know. Um, but a lot of craft stores are carrying Copic markers for upwards of $8. 
And you can get them on Blick Arts for I think it's five eighty six, which I'm not I, I'm not going to tell you the Copics aren't an investment because they are. But you have to remember that once you buy that marker once, you'll have it forever. You might have to re- refill the ink. You might have to change the nib, though I never have. And you see how much I Copic color. Um, like those may be things that you need to do, but you will have that marker. You will never need to buy that marker again. Um, so that's your investment. You're, you're almost $6 per marker, but your investment is forever, just like a stamp set. So getting into the coloring here, I'm combining the, I'm just going to say the purple and the pink, um, the purple and the pink. So I'm shading with the, the purple to get this really pretty kind of like magenta color. Um, and then going back over that with the pink to blend everything in. When you're working with these colors, you're almost always going to need to go back over it with your lightest color to create that blend. Copics blend in the fibers of your paper, so the wetter your paper is, the better your blend's going to be. That's why you see me, you know, starting with my lightest color, going to my darkest, darkest back into my lightest, um, and that's just because it's putting down more ink and allowing those colors to blend even better. For the leaves here, I am going to do a combination of the green and the yellow. The yellow is my lightest color, so I'm going back over the yellow or the green portions with that yellow. You don't need to cover up the entirety of the previous color, but you do want to make sure the point where they meet is pretty heavily saturated so that they do blend. For the base of the flowers, I'm going to use the green as my lightest color, and I'm going to do the shading with the teal or the BG45, um, and that's just going to give me a slight, slightly darker green um, so that they have a little bit of dimension. For the birds, okay, now you guys know if you watch my videos that I don't pre-make cards. Okay, like I turn on the camera, I make a card, it is what it is because nobody is perfect. Um, myself included, far, far cry from perfect over here. Um, and so I believe in, you know, not starting over and making it work. So this is the first time I've ever colored this bird. You're watching it live. You know, this is this is me the first time I've, I'm coloring it. So I am figuring it out where I want to put my shading, what colors I want to use. And you'll notice um, that this bird takes me longer than the rest because this is my guinea pig bird. <laughs> this is the one that we're gonna, you know, try the things on and, and figure out what we're gonna do. So I knew that I could shade my pink with my orange. Um, and so I knew that that was going to be something that I wanted to utilize to get some dimension and some depth. Um, but I also wanted there to be that little bit of yellow in the entirety of making these cards. This is the bird that I like the least. And that's just me being honest with you. And it's probably because the bright um, orange and yellows don't really go with the rest of the cards or the rest of the coloring. Um, and so I think that's why he wasn't my favorite. But um, I still think that he's pretty on his own. I think maybe I just needed a better environment. <laughs> I needed a better habitat for him um, or her. But so here I'm just going through and I'm kind of trying to create some dimension on the wings. The wings um, are kind of like an open palette. And so I wanted to create a little bit of uh, movement there. And it did take me a while. Like I said, I did have to go back um, over them quite a bit to figure out what I was doing or how I wanted it to look. But eventually I got there and then each consecutive bird was so much easier for me because I finally figured out like what my recipe was going to be. So keep that in mind when you're coloring a new image. Um, if you have the time, um, I would recommend sitting down and coloring it to figure out how you want to color it before you're necessarily going on to putting it onto a project or coloring it specifically for a project. It might save you some frustration when you're trying to figure it out. 
So could I have left that bird off? Yeah, I totally could have. Um, but I think that it's important to share those things because sometimes when you're sitting at home and you're, you know, the only person in your craft room and maybe you don't have a lot of crafty friends to share um, your experiences with, you may feel like this is a weakness or this is a issue that only you struggle with, but that's not true. I've been Copa coloring for years and I still have to dope out um, how I want to color each individual image as new images come out. So I am going to um, speed up the coloring just a little bit in certain parts or like maybe skip parts um just because this video is a little bit longer you guys know that I make long videos but I wanted you to be able to see them all um so once I was happy I love that hot pink belly on that bluebird I think it's so cute um and it matches like the little flower scheme I got going on I'm here for that on this bird, I'm actually going to blend three colors. Now you could do how I ended up with these colors that work so well together um, that I'm sharing with you today is because I wanted to do a rainbow and I needed colors that would work really well together. So you don't have to just blend two colors. You can do three. And so for this one, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm starting off with the um, blue green, the BG45, and then I'm going to fade that into my yellow green and then fade that into my yellow. So um, Again, yellow is my lightest color. I'm going to feather that in over the green, but I am then going to go back with the blue and blend that because green is my middle color. I'm going to blend that back into my green. Will it cover up some of the green? Yes, it will, but it, there will still be enough left for there to be um, very clearly that this color transition, that the green is still present in there. Um, I'm going to go in and further add some dimension with this B04 just in the areas that I want to be the darkest. And that's also going to be how I add in that movement and detail, the the lines for what would be like the feather wings. Um, so that I will do that with the, the, B04, the B04 because it is a little bit darker. And then again, I'm going to go back in and just kind of blend that in with the teal. Um, I did not plan on doing two, <laughs> I didn't plan on doing two cards, but sometimes you just got to roll with it. You know what I'm saying? So when I was looking at my birds, I really liked the way that they looked, but they seem to be missing a little pop or a little wow factor for the dimension for me because I am used to coloring with like four colors. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to add in stippling that will mimic the almost like the heathering that you would see with an actual animal's um, wings or feathers. And so all stippling is a series of small dots. And that's what I'm doing. I'm taking my markers and I'm just doing a series of small dots. I'm taking each individual color kind of into the next color. Um, so I'm going to take my teal into my green and my green into my yellow and my yellow into my green um, so that they're all kind of blended together. And I'm going to do that. Here's where we're, I'm talking about the speeding up. I'm going to do that for all of the birds. So I did, you know, the yellow, the orange, the pink. And this is just going to give us a ton of texture and, and really kind of bring up that dimension. Um, this is totally not necessary. The birds were beautiful on their own before. But this is just something else that you can do um, to make them look a little bit more interesting. In order to further that... Um, look that I'm going for, it's going to sound crazy. And you're going to think like, Kelly, why did you make your birds look snowed on? Um, I did make my birds look snowed on, but this is also another way that you can add um, texture, dimension, um, a look of highlights um, is by going in and adding a series of white dots. I am going to cover my whole birdie in these white dots. Um, and it's going to look like they're flying through a snowstorm, which by the way, if you're doing a winter card would look amazing. Um, but once I'm done and I have them all covered in white, 
I am going to go back in with my markers and I'm not going to cover up all the white dots, but I'm just going to sporadically put in more dots so that some of my white dots are lighter, some of them are, are brighter, some of them are more blended in. And again, this is just going to give them that look of dimension um, that maybe the coloring portion we're missing out on. So I'm going to outline them because that's what I do. I like a bold black outline. You can totally skip this step. Not necessary for anybody but me who's got a real problem. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to outline those. And then that's when I realized that I was probably going to have to do two cards because I just wasn't, I was going to have too many pieces, parts for one card. So again, we're just going to use the same colors that we've been using. And this is the layering wisteria and the add-on from Honeybee. And I am going to do a combination of um, the purple and the blue and the purple and the pink. Um, and some of them, the purple, pink, and the blue, to get some shading on this wisteria. Um, and so, like, just make it darker towards the center, lighter toward the edges, you know, whichever color combination you decide to go with. Um, and that will be... A recipe for something that works. You just want to remember to take your lightest color at the end of it and really blend that in so that you have enough ink in the paper to make your colors blend. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that this kind of excites you about the stash that you have or, you know, like, hey, maybe Copics are within my reach because if I just get these seven markers, which I'm not saying is not an investment, I'm not diminishing that investment whatsoever, but this could give you a starting point. Speaking of a starting point, people often ask me, like, what they should start with for Copic markers. And so I'm going to tell you that something that I wish that I knew when I started, which is don't buy the sets. The large sets, you know, 36, 40, 50, whatever they are nowadays, because they're not meant to blend together. And the beauties of Copics is when they blend together. So that's not going to help you be successful. The smaller sets that they have, where it's like a four color blend, those are great. And if you're interested in picking up a set, I would encourage that. If you're just looking to start, yours on your own with no sets. Um, I would encourage you, I have a um, Copic marker recommendation page. I will link that below. I would encourage you to check that out. But when you're looking to buy, think about what you color or what you want to color the most of. So are you a person who likes to color people? Great. Get skin tones, get hair colors. Are you a person who likes to color flowers? Perfect. Make sure you get greens and then just pick whatever your favorite color is and pick up a couple of those markers. Um, as far as them blending together, like what's going to get you a good blend? To start with, you want a light, a medium, and a dark. Don't be afraid of the darks. You need them for the shadows. You need them for dimension. Also, alternatively, don't be afraid of the lights because you need them for the highlights. So pick a solid mid-tone color that you like and then go two shades lighter or two shades darker. That would be my recommendation. So here I needed a um, background for my card. So I just did some really quick ink blending with Salty Ocean. And then I am going to spatter on my Perfect Pearls. You know that I'm a big fan of that. You saw me cut my frames Um Honeybee has a bunch of really great um, double stitched dies uh, in all different shapes. And so I chose to use those to kind of frame my card out. Um, and then here I've just kind of laid everything there. Nothing's put together, but just so I could get my sentiment stamped. And these come in the Grandma's Garden set. Um, just cute little simple um, sentiments, which I think are great. So um, I did talk to you guys, a little bit of story time, you know, for the next five minutes. Um, so I did talk to you guys about um, getting back out in my garage, which Eric and I did manage to do so far. So we got the top of this dresser sanded and stained in one night, um, which I'm pretty proud of us, I'm going to tell you, you know. Um, and then while this morning while Caitlin was napping, I went out there and put the first top coat on it, which is really awesome because then we can tape it off and then paint the rest of the dresser. 
So it's been a long time since we've have gone out into the garage to accomplish any sort of work, uh, but it does not seem like we have forgotten what we're doing. Thank goodness. So here's hoping. Um, the rest of the evening, you know what? We actually spent, um, I've always played video games. Um, you know, I came up playing, my parents had an Atari, uh, to date myself. Um, so I came up playing those. And then, you know, when the original Nintendo came out, um, all the way through owning a Switch, which, um, Eric actually very generously bought me, um, our first Christmas together because I love Zelda so much. And they had come out with a new Zelda, uh, for the Switch and I could, could not afford one. So he bought one for me as a gift, which is amazing. Um, and we still have it. So, Nathan does like playing video games, but he is on this Fortnite kick, um, which I think is pretty popular for kids his age. Uh, That was his birthday theme this year. And so since he's been home for summer vacation, during the school year, we would not let him play video games or watch YouTube during the week. Uh, It was a distraction for his grades and that was all bad. Um, So now in the summer, he's super relishing all of the time that he has to do those things if he would like to. I will say my son spends a considerable amount of time playing outside with his friends. So really, he's only playing his video games in the morning and in the evening. So last night in the evening, he asked um, Eric if he would play Fortnite with him, which Eric signed up to do so. Now, he had asked me earlier in the day if I would play with him and I was working, so I told him I would play with him later in the night. So when they were playing, I just went in there and hung out and then Eric and I took turns um, being, they have like duos, so you can play together, multiplayer. Um, And so we did that as a family um, last night after Caitlin was in bed. And even though I'm not very good, uh, because I have no idea what I'm doing, um, it was very fun to be able to sit there and spend time together and do something with Peanut that he enjoys doing. So we got some garage time, we got some video game time. It was a productive evening in our house. Um, so here the cards are put together. I've added some shimmer. Um, like these are the final cards and I'm really happy with the way that they came out considering we only used seven markers. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below. You know that I always answer, um, those comments myself and thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. I will catch you on the next video. Bye.